One of the things that I found in studying the eagle that uh, was, was significant to me was the vision of the eagle. An eagle can see four to eight times greater than any human being. So however great we can see, the eagle's vision is four to eight times greater. It can see up to two miles away. At full speed, which for the eagle is up to 187 miles per hour, its eyes have the unique ability to uh, constantly adjust to focus in on its prey as it gets closer and closer. Where most predators uh, lose track of their prey when they're camouflaged, the eagle has the ability to even, even see its prey when it's, in its, uh, when it's set back and it's being camouflaged to the extent that it can see up to five different shades of gray. So the eagle's eyesight is incredibly keen. Its eyesight is, is inc very, very incredible. I felt like Donald Trump there. <laughs> I was like, the eagle's eyesight is, is big. It's, it's bigly, bigly big. And, so big, it's big. Um, anyway. Hey, just so you know, it's harder than how it looks. It's harder than it looks. It is harder than it looks. Um, the amount of conversations you have up here in your head, you'd think it's just one. No, there's about 15 conversations going on. And you're trying to find the one that you're supposed to be um, actually articulating. Um, and so, yes. So the eagle's eyesight is, is, is incredible. And so I want to talk to you about having, having an eagle's eye or having an eagle eye for 2017. Just asking God that he would give you greater vision than maybe what you previously had. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that him and his contemporary, that he was him and those who are with him, the Hebrew children that were with him were ten times greater than all of their contemporaries because there was an excellent spirit that was in them. In other words, the idea behind what we're here doing today, the God we're worshiping, the God that we're serving, the God that we're loving, of course, it's all about him. But the more you begin to get a vision of who God is, to me, the clearer you become on maybe what God is desiring for you. And I believe that God usually at least in most cases, begins to reveal to someone that there are greater things that they can do in life. There is a greater person that they can be than, than what they maybe ever thought possible. And part of that vision for who they can be, part of that vision for what we can do in life comes from our ability to, to ask God, give us Eyes to see and ears to hear what you're saying. In other words, God, let me see things the way that you see them. Let me, let me get a vision of 2017. And as I ask for that vision, God, help me to see greater than what I would see had you not given me the vision. And so in verse 1, Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, Then I raise my eyes and look, behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. And so I said, where are you going? And he said to me to measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is its length. And there was an angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a town without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be glory in her midst. And this scripture, the the story is speaking of a young man who has been given the job to go out to the city of Jerusalem, to go around its perimeter. And if you can see him here, he's got a measuring line. And he's out there measuring exactly what is going to be the width and the, the, the breadth of the city of Jerusalem in order to bring back the dimensions to those who are going to design how the wall is going to be rebuilt. And so he's out there, he's got his tape measure and he's got his notepad and he's putting together all his calculations and God is watching this young man 
as he's putting together his numbers, as he's putting together the facts, as he's putting together uh, his, his calculations. And God says to the angel, I want you to go down there and I want you to tell that young man to stop measuring. And I want you to let him know that, that no walls can contain what it is that I desire to do. And so the scripture here is dealing with the problem that I think many of us have, and it's the problem of measuring. He's got his yardstick out, if you will. He's like the Steve Urkel Christian of his day. He's, according to my calculations, I believe that God can do this and God can't do that. And God can do this much, but he can't do this much. And he's, he's measuring. And God says to the angel, go down there and I want you to grab his notepad and rip it up and throw it away. I'm adding a little bit. I want you to grab his yardstick and I want you to break it and let him know that I'm much bigger than what he's planning. Let him know my purpose and my plan is bigger than what he can calculate. I believe in 2017, God wants to raise people up that will simply recognize that, that maybe you've lived your life limiting God based upon your measurements. Maybe, maybe you've limited God in your life. And, and in 2017, is the year where you're saying, God, give me that eagle eye. Help me see eight times greater than what I ever have before. Help me stop measuring people. Help me stop measuring circumstances. Help me cu cu quit measuring my own life. And help me quit concluding that you can do this much and not that much, that you can do this here and you can't do such and such here. God is always wanting us to know that he is much greater than any calculation we can put together. He's much greater than our measurements. His his ability is much greater than anything we have the human potential to calculate. God is still greater than all of that. I found over the years, and I'm speaking to myself, that I can measure myself out of a miracle. I can even measure myself out of my own destiny. I watch it with parents. They, they measure their children out of what they are capable of doing. Even in a church, if we're not careful, we can, we can measure ourselves and say, oh, God can do this much with us here in Florence, Kentucky. He can do this much, but he can't do this, and he can't do that over there. So, so many times we measure ourselves because we pull out our calculators, and we pull out our notepads, and we pull out our tabulators, and we got our yardsticks, and we have this measurement in our life. And the problem is when we do all that, no matter how factual it is, no matter, no matter how specific it is in your mind what can happen and can't happen, the truth of the matter is you, you can many times leave out or leave no room for the supernatural. And if you know anything about God, God is never going to fit into your measurements. He's never going to allow you to calculate him. He's never going to allow you to box him in in life. And many people never see God do the impossible because they're controlled by that measuring spirit in their life. I believe measuring is not only ungodly and unholy, but it is a faithless spirit that's sent to intimidate God's people. It's there to say, don't dream for more, don't believe for more, don't reach for more, don't hunger for more. It's there to tell you and I that, 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 that you should doubt this and uh, don't believe that. It's just there to fill you and I with questions concerning what God is able to do. Many times it comes through a self-appointed yardstick. You know who they are, the people that just, for whatever reason, feel like they have this self-appointed authority to introduce to you all the things that they believe you can't do. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, wow, who made you the authority on my God-given potential? Just self-appointed, just random sometimes. But it's amazing the amount of people in our past. It's amazing the amount of people in, in, in our life that they, 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 they've never... They, they definitely haven't died on a cross. They, they definitely didn't speak the world into existence. They, they have no right to be the one with the full authority to be telling you what you're able to do or not able to do. But yet we let those voices, those yardsticks, 
tell us what we can be. And at some point, you've got to just simply say, you know what, I'm going to ask God to help me be a limitation breaker. God, help me break out of that, that yardstick kind of mentality. Help me, God, know that there are moments still where you're wanting to blow my mind. You're wanting to exceed my expectations. You're wanting to do abundantly above anything I could ever ask, think, or imagine. God, whatever happens in 2017, give me an eagle eye. Help me, help me never, you know, th this is the way I would say it. Let me put it like this. Whatever your calculations are, whatever you believe can happen and can't happen, somehow or another, you should just double it. In other words, put yourself in the place where you're believing God in such a way that only he can do it. Only he can do it. If it doesn't happen, at least you didn't limit him. But so many people, they only ask, they only believe, they only have faith for what their calculations have given them permission to believe God for. But if you just double it, then you're simply saying, there's no way, it's impossible, it'll never happen. But at least you weren't the person who didn't say, God, I wanna believe you for it. And what happens if it does? What happens if you remove the limitations? What happens if you, you, you allow God to do what he did with that young man measuring Jerusalem? What if, you, what, what if you allowed God to break the yardsticks? And what if you allowed God to show you that, that what he wants to do is much bigger than anything you could measure? If God's in it, there should be no limit. If God's in it, there should be no limit. Why don't you say that with me? Say, if God's in it, there should be no limit. Get it in your spirit real quick. I want you to say it. I want you to, you're just saying it because I want you to say it. But I want you to say it to your own heart, to your own situation, to that marriage that's struggling and frayed, to those kids that are away from God, to that, that, that career that looks like it's not going to work out. Maybe even you're, you've been spiritually dry. Maybe, I, maybe you've been hurt and, and, and you're in a dark place, a hopeless place. And that, I want you to say from your own spirit, if God's in it, Come on, let's say it. Say, if God's in it, there is no limit. The Bible teaches us that all power is in God's hand. That he can turn nothing into something. That, that he can take impossible scenarios where there seems to be no way and he can make a way. And this God that we talk about is our heavenly father. Meaning that he's with us, he's, he's for us, he, he, he lives on the inside of us, he's fully backing you. It's, it's not that you're just saying, saying you can do it, you're saying, God, even if I can't do it, I acknowledge I am a son or a daughter of the one who can do it, and I don't want to limit what I can do because limiting what I can do is limiting what you can do. And whether God decides to do it or not is not the point. I just don't want to limit him. I don't want to live my life saying my whole life is controlled by my own measurements. You know, the only thing stopping many of us is the yardsticks in our life. I'm thankful that we don't serve a yardstick God. Habakkuk chapter three and verse four, the Bible says that there is a hidden part of God's power. One commentary says, God conceals more than he reveals. Think about that with me. God conceals more than he reveals. When Habakkuk or Habakkuk or however you want to say it, no one, I've been Christian for 25 years and no one, I've never figured out exactly how you're supposed to say that. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, all kinds of different, different ways to say it, I guess. I'm sure some theologian out there is like, I know how to say it. I know, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email him. I'm going to Facebook him and tell him I know how to say it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look forward to all of the emails. Look forward to the hyphens and the pronunciation. And it's great. It's wonderful. Amazing. Feeling sarcastic this morning. Anyway. Um, so... In this text where the prophet is talking about that God has hidden part of, of who he is, it's right on the end of, of all these magnificent acts of nature that are being discussed. Mountains shaking, 
oceans drying up, these, these natural phenomenons that any of us would look at and any of us would see, and if we saw them, we would, we would be engulfed with the awe and the wonder of what nature can do. And, and as the author is writing these things, when we would, our mind would be in awe of these natural wonders, he says, okay, with God, no matter how powerful you think that he is, no matter how magnificent you think that he is, no matter what your imagination can possibly uh, grab a hold of, there's still more that he has concealed than he has revealed. In other words, the author's trying to say one of the biggest mistakes we can make is the arrogance to believe that we've seen God do all he can do or that we know all that he can do or that we've got all the measurements and how God can move and how he can't move and how he can work and how he can't work. It's an incredible, matter of fact, it's such a, it's, the magnitude of that mistake is so great. When we look in Ezekiel at exactly how Lucifer fell, if you study exactly how it went down, the scripture begins to teach us that he went to, we know at least one third of the angels, probably went to all of them. And he's there beginning to talk with them and he's probably got his notepad out and he's got his calculations and he's got his equations and he's got his measurements and he's beginning to show uh, all the angels in heaven how God is lacking, how God is limited, how God is not doing what he thinks God should be doing. He's, he's not, in, in his mind, God is not enough. In his mind, God is limited. And he convinces, we know, at least one third of the angels to buy in to his measurements. And so they decide what we're going to do because evidently God's weak, so they're going to replace God. They're gonna overthrow him. They step in. And the Bible says in the book of Luke that like lightning, Satan fell from heaven. In other words, no matter what his measurements were, no matter what his calculations were, no matter how many millennia he had watched God, no matter how much he thought that he knew God, had seen God, his power, his ability, no matter how much, all of a sudden in one moment, God can reveals all of this power that he's never shown and Satan is flailing through the universe, one third of the angels asking themselves this question, where did that power come from? Where did that might come from? We'd never seen that because God had concealed more than he had revealed. You see, God is never going to be yielded to the yardsticks of this world. Oh, God can save so-and-so, but not so-and-so. God can move in this way and not that way. There's no way I can remember them. I, I, could, I could actually show you a picture and give you their name. People that said there's no way that God could take this church in Florence, Kentucky that was in decline and was struggling and didn't look that bright and didn't look like it had that much ahead. There's no way God could breathe life into it and raise us up to be what you're seeing happen here today. There's no way. But I'm thankful that God is not yielded to that yardstick mentality. His power is not subject to our measurements. Mark my words, God's got more power that's been hidden than we've ever seen. He has concealed more than he has revealed. You have to be careful because in 2017, you could maybe miss some miracles that God wants to do in your life because you're so busy measuring, so busy pulling out all of the things that you think God can do and can't do that you've not just yielded and say, God, I, I don't know. Maybe there's more to you than what I've ever known. Maybe there's more to you than what I've ever experienced. And in 2017, give me that eagle eye. Let me see eight times. Let me see greater than how I've ever seen before. In 2 Kings chapter six, there's this story of a famine that hit Israel. And this famine is, is, is so severe that the people have resorted to eating donkey heads and dove's dung. Now, I've had some tough times. Anybody else? Uh, in college, I can remember my whole cupboard was full of, how'd you say that again, Roman noodles? Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles, I'm gonna make it biblical, Roman noodles. Roman noodles. 
ramen noodles. But I've never been in such a low place that I would eat donkey brain and dove's dung. It's so severe that some people are even eating their own children. And in their minds, it's over. Their measurements, what they've concluded, there's no hope, there's no future, this is it. The end is in sight, it's over. And in that time, in chapter seven, 2 Kings chapter seven, a prophet stands up and he says, this time tomorrow, there will be so much food, think about this, there will be so much food, you would never be able to possibly eat it. There will be so much food, no matter how hungry you are, no matter how hopeless it seems, you and I will be able to eat as much as we want and there will still be food left over that we could never possibly consume. And in the middle of this prophet saying all of these things, a man stands up and he's got his measuring line out and he's got his notepad and he's got his bifocals and he's got his calculator and he's got his tabulator and he's figuring it all out. He's going, he's trying to figure it all out. He's looking at it, he's looking at it, he's, he's pulling all the math together. And he says, if God were to open up the windows of heaven, what you're saying cannot happen. And the next day, they go from eating dove's dung and donkey brains to filet mignon and lobster. But this is the key. The guy who had his measurements out, his calculator out, his notepad out, that guy did not enjoy, as a matter of fact, he got ran over because everybody was on their way to the buffet line while he was trying to tell them why God couldn't do it and he got ran over and he didn't enjoy one minute of the miracle. You see, we come into services like this and we would say, oh, we're not that guy. There's no way we're that guy. We're in church and we sing about Jesus is alive and we, we sing about how he conquered the grave and we sing about the, the greatness of God and how all things are possible. But the truth is, in our hearts, we're pulling out our own yardsticks. In our hearts, we're pulling out all of these things, all of this, these, we're pulling out our past, we're pulling out a regret, we're pulling out some negative situation, we're, we're pulling out you know, our thoughts on the matter and we're rationalizing what can happen and what can't happen. And the truth of the matter is, what, what would happen in just one service, forget all the services, but just one service, if you would decide to say, okay, God, in this moment, I'm not going to limit you. In this moment, I'm gonna ask you to, to, to free me from that measuring spirit and break that yardstick mentality. And in this service, help me not bring up my past and help me not bring up that regret and help me just for one moment believe that you are greater than any of my measures. Give me that eagle eye. Just, God, just help me for just even a moment get a glimpse of what your greatness can do in my life if I would just simply believe that you are able and that your power is not diminished in my life. I believe in 2017, God wants to break that yardstick mentality in your life. The Bible says all things are possible to them that will just believe. Think about this with me. The angel goes down to this young man and he says, whatever God is wanting to do is measureless. Your calculations are useless. What he wants to do is beyond anything you can comprehend. And what if in this service, you would simply hear God's word. Think about how the Bible teaches us moments like this, how important moments like this are. Not because I'm speaking, not because I'm talking, but the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there's something about hearing God's word that increases faith in our life. Now think about that. In other words, when we hear scripture, Jesus said, his words are spirit and they are life. Whatever in your, your life is limited or dying or, or dead or seems hopeless, when you hear his word, it's to bring life and spirit to that situation. 
The Bible says all things will pass away, but his word will remain forever. That there's something about the seed of God's word, if you'll allow your heart to be fertile, that it's the eternal word of God that's to take root in your heart and it's to produce a harvest that exceeds anything you could ever imagine. It's not an apple seed that produces an apple. It's not an apple seed that produces an apple tree. It's the apple seed that produces orchard after orchard after orchard for generation after generation. It's the thing that says, God, give me an eagle eye to see what you see in a seed and in this service. That's what's going on. There's a seed that's being planted in your heart and only God knows the potential. Only God knows how far it can reach. Only God knows what it's capable of doing. Our job is to simply not limit him and to say, God, in 2017, allow the yardsticks to be broke over my mind, in my relationships. Spiritually speaking, God, I believe that you are able to do more than what I ever thought possible. You know, I think that I can just feel it, that there are those who say, ah, it's a good sermon, Pastor, but I don't feel it. Good sermon, you know, but uh, it's 1240. Should be wrapping up about now. It's a beautiful day outside. Get on with it. And what our flesh wants us to do is wrap this service up get outside of this place and go right back to that limitation thinking that we had before we came in here and not let God's word do what it's capable of doing. The Bible says that it will accomplish what it's sent out to do, that it will not return back void. Now, in the Old Testament, what God's people were always instructed to do is they would be marching into a battle, they would be facing an enemy, they'd be facing a natural barrier. And in their mind's eye, they would see the impossible. In their mind's eye, they would see what could happen or couldn't happen. They would be outnumbered by their enemy, outmanned, outgunned, overwhelmed. And as they would look at what seemed like there was no way in the natural, God would give instructions to God's people that when you cannot see it with your eye, when you cannot see it with your natural eye, the only way you can see it how I see it, the only way you can get that eagle eye, the only way you can get my eye on the situation, my my vision for the situation, where you see It seems outnumbered, you seem outmanned, you seem overwhelmed. The only way you could do it is God would send the praisers out ahead of everybody else. And the praisers would go out and they would begin to praise God, they would begin to worship God, they would begin to acknowledge God, they would begin to to not just take their calculations and their measurements to the battle they would factor God in it. In other words, whatever your calculations are, at the very bottom, you should put plus a miracle. And what allows you to see the miraculous is the gift of praise. So what praise does is it helps me get my eye off of the situation and get God's eye on the situation. It helps me see things greater. It helps me see things the way he sees. And it's my way of saying, God, I thank you that even though I don't see a way, I don't know how you could make a way, I thank you ahead of time that you're able to do what I'm unable to do. You're able to see what I'm unable to see. And praise is my ability to say, God, I thank you for it even though I don't see it. So whether you feel it or not, God's instructions are always, if you want to see the situation that looks impossible, turn around. If you want to see the enemy that that you feel is outnumbering you, be defeated. If you want to see that natural obstacle and barrier be completely removed, if you want to see it, 
if you want to know it can happen, but in the natural, there's no way, then you're only left with one thing. As a Christian, you're left with saying, God, I'm going to acknowledge you, and I'm going to look to you, and I'm going to lift up my eyes, and I'm going to see where my hope comes from, and I'm going to simply praise you in spite of my situation, and I'm going to thank you, and I'm going to glorify you, and I'm going to honor you, and I'm going to adore you, and I'm going to acknowledge that you've concealed more than you revealed. I'm going to acknowledge that there's a hidden part of your power, and I don't want to live my whole life with my calculations, my limitations, my calculator, my notepad. No, I don't want to be a Steve Urkel Christian in 2017. I want to have an eagle eye. Does anybody know that God can do abundantly above anything you could ever ask, think, or imagine? Come on, let's acknowledge him in this room today. Lord, we want to acknowledge you in Jesus' name. Come on, get God's eye on the situation. Get God's perspective on the situation. In Jesus' name. You can stay standing, I'm closing. The Bible says he's above all things in Hebrews 12 and 13. He's beneath all things. He's outside all things, and he's inside all things. Which means if he's above all things, but think about this, he's not out of our reach. He's, he's outside of all things, but he's not confined. He's beneath all things, but he's not shut out. He's inside all things, but he's not bound or limited. If he's above all things, that means he rules all things. If he's beneath all things, that means he supports all things. If he's outside all things, that means he can reach around all things. Nothing is ever out of his reach. No one is ever out of his reach. And if he's inside all things, that means there's no void that he cannot fill. There's no thirst that he cannot quench. There's no lack in your life that God cannot meet. He's above all things. He's beneath all things. He's outside of all things. He's inside of all things. Only God can be your all in all. Whatever 2017 looks like in your mind, get God's eye on the situation. Ask God to give you an eagle eye. Ask God to give you greater vision than what you've ever had. Ask God to help you break that yardstick mentality in your life. Maybe it's yardstick people that you need to say, God, help me no longer give them the final say. Help me know that there is a greater word than some man or some woman or some doubter or some hater or some critic or some, somebody that doesn't see what God sees inside of you. God, let me have your eye on what you want me to do in 2017.